So we've been coding a lot with the actors, and we haven't done a whole lot up here with the worlds. And now I think it's time to add a couple of worlds here. Because in any game, there are two outcomes. There is a win and there is a loss. So let's make a couple of worlds. So I'm going to right click here on world. And apparently my computer needs to wake up a little. There we go. Uh, and I'm going to pick a background that's going to be the world that we get taken to when we lose. So I guess we could say that if we lose, we hit the wall. So let's pick that as my background and I'm going to call it lose world. Okay. And then I'm going to pick another one and you guessed it. This one's for win world. And I'm going to give that one. And again, we're going to change these later. So I don't have to think too much about it yet, but let's just pick sure. Okay. So what we want to do is if we lose, we want to go switch it to lose world. And if we win, we want to switch it to win world. How do we do that? Well, again, we want to think about where these things are going to happen in the code. Where in the code would we lose? Well, and losing would be mean you'd get hit by an enemy bullet. So I go into the enemy bullet class and down here I have the code where you know if we do get hit, the hero gets hit by a bullet, then we do all this stuff. And one of the things is if the value of the life counter is zero, meaning if the hero has run out of lives, we're going to remove the hero from the world and that's fine. We can leave that. But the other thing we're going to do is we are going to say greenfoot and then we hit dot control space and one of the things you see is set world we can set the world to be a different world so i'm going to click and i'm going to set the world to be a new instance of lose world with two brackets like so so what this says is if we run out of lives, not only are we going to remove the hero now, but we are also going to remove hero and go to lose world. Let's give it a shot. So I'll try to lose all my lives. There's one, two, and there we go. It worked. We went to lose world. So we reset. And now, how would we get to win world? Well, to get to win world, we would have to get rid of all the snakes. Where would that happen? So in the heroes bullet is where we decide, okay, well, if we shoot a hero bullet, um, we're going to move it up the screen and then might as well do some commenting while we're here. If we hit an enemy, and we're going to remove the enemy and the bullet. But what we also want to do after we re remember this has to be the last thing we do inside this if statement. So right above here I'm going to say if. Now how would we determine if all the snakes are gone? Well that's interesting. We don't really have anything to keep track of that yet. So that leads us to another dilemma. How would we keep track of the, sna of the snakes? So maybe we table that for one second and we would have to think what is it that would keep track of how many snakes have been hit and that takes us back to the idea of a counter we have a life counter but one thing we don't have yet is a score counter so we go back to my world and right here we're going to copy this line of code and paste it and now the world is not going to just have one counter but two it's going to have a hero life counter, but it's also going to have a score count. So again, what I'm doing here is I'm giving the world a counter. One counter is going to be a hero life count, and one is going to be a score count. And just like I added the hero life counter, I'm going to add the score count like so. Now the only thing is I don't want it at the same place so I'm going to put this on the right side of the screen. So if I put it at 550 and 20 and let's set the score initially to 0, there we go. Now I have a couple of counters although something's up because that should be a 3. Let's see what I've done wrong here. 
Ah, right there. I forgot to change that to score count. And so there we go, three and zero. So let's go back to our bullet. And just like we did in the last video with the enemy bullet, we've said if the hero gets hit by an enemy bullet, we are going to decrease the life counter by one. So we're going to copy that. I'm going to go back to my bullet. And if the enemy gets hit with a hero bullet, we are going to add, let's say, 10. Let's say that's how much uh, an enemy is worth. Let's add 10 to the score count. And again, I'm going to hit control space, and you'll see here's score count. And so I'm going to add 10 to the score counter. Now, before we go to the win world, let's see if this works. So if I hit a snake, you should see that counter go up by 10. Sure enough, it's working. So when that counter hits 50, we should tell it to go to win world. So now that I've thought that through, we're going to go back to the bullet class. And right after we alter the score count, we're going to check and say if my world dot score count dot get value. So that that code will get the value of the score count that lives in my world. And if that value is 50, well then, what we want to do is go to our new world. Greenfoot.setWorld new win world. Let's try it out. There we go. And so just like that, we can go from one world to the other just simply by making a condition. If we get 50 in the counter, we go there. If we lose, or we go to win world. If we lose all of our lives, we go to lose world. Now, the other thing I want to do while we're talking about the worlds, this kind of bothers me because my world is not the best name. If we're making a Space Invaders game, the intention is later we're going to have multiple levels. So this should really be called level one. Now, when I do that, unfortunately, that's going to cause some problems because I've used my world in the code in multiple places. So what I have to do is I just have to go through the code and anywhere I see my world, I'm going to change it to say level one. And Greenfoot will help you by putting red marks around everything that you've got to change. So here and here and enemy bullet here and here. This is probably something I should have done at the start, but it's not too hard to fix it once you're done. And one other thing that we'll do while we're at it, because you may notice that these have a background and this one doesn't, that's a very easy thing to fix. You can right click, set image, and then you can go get any background you like. And since we are eventually going to be putting these things in space, we can pick the space background and as soon as we reset, you can see now we have things in space and we are getting closer and closer to the real deal of Space Invaders. So that is how you change worlds. It's how you get a score counter on the screen. And uh, we'll proceed in the next video.